Welcome to the Getting Real with Hillary show, where ordinary heroes tell extraordinary stories during unique and never been heard before conversations with your host, Hillary Arno Burns. Hillary's unique listening and way of asking questions results in conversations that aren't usually talked about. So you can create the life that you really want, but are afraid you can't really have. We are demonstrating the greatness and the human spirit in creating a world where we all reclaim our birthright of joy, happiness, purpose, and passion. Now, here's your host, Hilary Arno Burns. Welcome to the Getting Real with Hillary show. And before I introduce our incredible guest today, we are going to watch a short video. I'm a sorceress. I'll get you with my sweet caress. I'm a sorceress. I bewitch you, I confess. I'm a little witch. A witch. I can make your body twitch. I'm a little witch. You're, a witch. You're stuck with me and you can't switch. I can dig any form I want. Fly for my witch's broom. I can cast a spell on you and keep you captive always in my room. I'm a little witch. Well, are you inspired? I am certainly inspired by Ildi Lee. She is a singer, songwriter, an author, a wife, a mother. As you see, she was on America's Got Talent. She has her own movie coming out and her own book coming out. And that's all at the very young age of 82. Welcome, Ildi Lee. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Well, thank you. For a wonderful introduction. <laughs> yes, and I forgot to tell them that you were a teen, what was it, a teen pop star when you were a teenager in Paris? A teen star, yeah. <laughs> wow. So what so what did you do? You were you were like a dancer or a singer or everything. I know. I saw you in the it looks like sixties outfits. Mm -hmm. Was yes. that in the sixties? Sixties, yes, yes. Yeah, well if you've ever or the 60s, actually. It was in the 50s. <laughs> it was in the 50s. Well, the outfits looked like the 60s, right? right. You right. had the big hair and right. the dresses. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you become that? How did you become a, a pop well, star? First of all, I had a very, very uh, sad childhood in, uh, in Hungary. And we were occupied. Uh, and uh, during the Hungarian Revolution, after the revolution, we, we left our country. And we were extremely poor in the beginning. Uh, we went to France where my father, he was a lawyer. Actually, he was uh, 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 practicing law in three countries and, and three languages. He spoke eight languages. <laughs> Unbelievable man. But anyway, so we had a very, very difficult times to start our lives uh, in poverty. And uh, I was a very sad, lonely teenager. But when I got a guitar for my 16th birthday from my dad, that changed my life. And I started to write songs and uh, I became, uh, actually, I, yes, I became a TV star. Uh, I won a competition. I had my first kiss from Salvador Dali. <laughs> that was a whole... Wow. Uh, and uh, so I became a star in, in France. And uh, did you dream did you, come true? Yeah. Did you teach yourself the guitar? How did you learn? I teach, I taught myself. I had a good teacher <laughs> myself. And uh, I was not very good. I was in the guitar. It was enough to, to do little songs. And actually, that's which, which is really interesting that I was not a great singer. I was not a great guitarist. Uh, I was a very good songwriter. Uh, and 
and I brought something to people because uh, I had little braids uh, there and uh, all the mothers wanted their daughter to be that idealistic as that little refugee, Hungarian refugee girl in the television. Mm -hmm. So uh, I brought something that people, it touched people's lives, especially my songs. So mm -hmm. that's what I keep doing uh, with, through my songs. I want to make a difference in life. And I do believe that one person can make a difference. Wow. So how did you actually go from receiving a guitar to being on TV? Like, how did that happen? Well, I had my, uh, um, there was a contest, a television oh. contest, and I won that contest. And uh, 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 the biggest uh, uh, recording mogul, uh, Eddie Barclay with the Barclay Records. He uh, saw me and he signed me up and I had my first uh, record and uh, a teeny record for teeny, teeny girls. And uh, it became uh, one of the number one on, on uh, the radio. And so it started my, uh, my career. <laughs> and oh my God. I, for the little Hungarian refugee girl who was who was um, dressed by the Red Cross, uh, I was so poor, I became somebody. And it was just magnificent. And I decided that one day, when I am going to be famous, <laughs> then I will never forget how poor we were. And I will never forget that there are people out there who need your help mm. and I'm trying to help with anything and everything I do, my writing, my singing, my uh, books, everything. Uh, I want to serve. Mm. I want to give back society that for the chance I've been given because I've been given a tremendous chance. So when you were in Hungary before you had to flee, were you poor there? Uh, yes, we were. We lost everything uh, to, you know, when in the communism, it, it was, we call it communism, but it actually was uh, like a state uh, um, occupation. Yes. So, yes, we lost everything. So we were struggling. But originally, your father was a lawyer, you were fine, right? It was only when the war came, the revolution, or the or was it World War II? Uh, well, over the World War II, uh, he, we were living in Yugoslavia. So mm -hmm. he was in the Yugoslavian army uh, uh, fighting against Hitler. And uh, there was, a, this is my, what my first book is all about. It is starting with the uh, uh, Nazism, then the communism, and then the free world. And uh, this book actually, hopefully it will become a film. And uh, the biggest problem that uh, I had in my life is, you know, uh, Sonic Picture Classics CDO, uh, Michael Baker, he uh, was so interested in, he was, okay, how can I go? Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. Right there. I said, he was so interested in my book and he wanted to have it, but I, it was not finished yet. <laughs> I, so I didn't want to give it to him. So we were uh, like uh, doing a tug of war with a book. <laughs> and then he said, he, he took the book and he went to the bathroom. And he said he'll be back. And uh, no, he, no, he said that he's going to have a telephone call. And, but he took the book. I went to the bathroom and going to the bathroom, I see him reading my book in front of him. <laughs> and he didn't see me. I just saw behind. And he came back and he wanted to have the book. And I didn't want to give it to him. And so uh, he said, listen, uh, get yourself a, a producer, a television uh, a, a, a film producer. Uh, get yourself a good script and come back and see me and we're going to sit down and discuss it. The CEO of uh, Sony, Cla Sony Picture Classic 
I mean, you can get to him no matter what. Yeah. Well, how did you meet him? Uh, it was, uh, I was covering the Oscars for the television show uh, for Hungary. And that was an Oscar night. Uh, night. That was a night where I was seated next to uh, uh, Gene Simon, you know, Kiss. I sent you a picture on that too. <laughs> wow. And that was an interesting night. And so he walked around the whole evening with my flyer, this flyer in his hand. You can see him standing there with my flyer. So I got my flyer and uh, wow. It, and uh, also I have the synopsis in the back. So mm. he still had the, the story. Now is the book already published or it's coming out? No, the book is not published. Actually, I am looking for a publisher. Hello, people out there. <laughs> All right, good. So she's looking. Publish first and then do the film. Okay. Wow. Amazing. All right. So, okay. So we skipped. So, all right. So back to you. So you're. So, all right. So that's all in the book. Your how you got out of Hungary and got right. to Paris. Okay. Right. What did you do after you were a, a teen star? What What did you do next? Well, uh, next, uh, uh, when I was uh, already pretty famous, I had a television show in, uh, in Munich, uh, Germany. And uh, I met my husband there. And uh, before that, I had a I was poisoned by my understudy in a, as a star of a uh, musical. And uh, I was between life and death in the hospital for months because my liver was totally gone. And uh, I decided that this tinsel life is not for me. I wanted to have a husband and children like everybody else. And that was a time when I was performing in Munich and met my husband. And uh, so I got married. I came out here to the United States and I had two beautiful, beautiful children. Uh, Tracy, my daughter, who is a professor at the most, she's teaching at the most uh, famous university in the world. Harvard University in Boston, mm -hmm. and my son, and also she's beautiful. <laughs> she's beautiful <laughs> and a good person. And uh, my son is a writer, and he lives in Chicago. Mm. Wonderful. And so when the children flew the coop, then I came back to my love which is performing, writing, and, and... But before that, actually, I, I built a home for uh, the... We have a... <laughs> here in Palos Verdes, we have an art center. Mm. And the art center uh, fundraised with that home, and they raised a million and a half... No, a million dollar... Um, and uh, so I, I, I played. I mean, I'm going to send you a picture. I don't have it here right now, uh, of the home uh, that I built. So that was already something. I remodeled and built five homes uh, in two continents. So that was that's how we have this beautiful home here. I started out with a small one. I remodeled. We uh, sold it. We got a uh, double for the price. Then I got a bigger one, bigger one, bigger one until uh, with a small budget, I I created a palace. <laughs> wow. So you have to be creative in life. Uh, and that's something that everybody can do out there. You know, you buy something, yeah. a little apartment, you remodel with a good, beautiful, make it beautiful, beautiful, sell it, double it. And here we go. <laughs> wow. Now, can I ask you a couple questions that are... when you said you were poisoned by your understudy, 
How did she do she? I'm assuming it was a she. And did she go to jail? Uh, no, because there was no evidence. So she was a, a girl who wanted to have my my role. And she was my understudy. And uh, in um, Bordeaux, which is a French city, uh, she had uh, uh, relatives and she wanted to have my uh, my role. And she asked me, would you, uh, would you let me do that night? Uh, uh, and, you know, I was young and I wanted to... I, 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 uh, I, today I would say, oh yeah, sure, do it. But at that time, I didn't want <laughs> to give up my role. And so one night, uh, it was a few days before, and one night uh, she was very nice to me and I was thinking, well, you know, she's a nice person uh, and she invited me for dinner. And I remember that I went uh, to the bathroom and I, I came back. And after when, uh, we had I started to feel really sick. And the next day, that's where we got, we were in touring. And next day we were, we get to Bordeaux. And at Bordeaux, I am still going on stage, but I was really sick. I'm really sick. And uh, the next thing, I probably fell, but the next thing was, I saw her walking in the dress that, uh, that you were supposed to wear? Dior, Dior dress that I was, she was walking on my dress into, and then I blocked out. They took me to the hospital and I was hospitalized for months because my, my liver was totally gone. So, uh, but liver, it grows. Yeah. 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 So, but ever so they since. never caught her. They never. They never no, could prove. There was no no evidence. Did that she me. ever admit doing it? But you know, karma is um unbelievable, and that's what at my age I saw so many uh, different moments when karma really works. Maybe twenty years later, but it really gets to you. And uh, if you do good things, you're gonna have nice things in life. If you have nasty, good, bad things, it's gonna catch up with you. So one day I was walking in in Shao Paris to my friends, uh, American friends, and we go to Pigalle. And in those nude place, who do you see? That girl. Uh, uh, she was starring in a nude uh, third grade awful thing. Oh. So karma got her. I didn't want to, anything bad to happen to her because that's not who I am. Mm-hmm. But that was an interesting uh, moment in my life. But everything has a reason. Yeah. And the reason for that was so I realized I don't want this life. I want a family. I want children. So how did you meet your husband? Was he from California? Where was he from? Uh, he was from California. He was a lawyer for. Uh, he was in Munich to to save an airline, and oh. and uh, so um, it's very interesting because uh, the night before I performed in in the Bayerischer Hof Hotel, which is the biggest hotel in in Munich. And uh, the night before, I had a television show. And after my television show, I went down to the uh, to the nightclub with a friend of mine, and um, I put on a black wig because I didn't want the people to come and get autograph and all that stuff bothering. So I put a, a black wig on, and there is this American guy who is with a big hair like a Beatles head uh, and he's coming and he's taking me to dance. So we dance and we were, we were going crazy. And then after I said to my friend, when that crazy American comes back, don't let me go because he doesn't speak French. I don't speak English and that we can't communicate. But I went to dance with him and it was a slow dance and it was very nice. And somehow the next night he invited me with his friends, uh, airline friends, uh, to dinner. I took my portfolio with my dinner because I want him. I wanted to him to see I am not an easy girl. I am a star, and you're not going to have what you want out of right. me. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then 
and there was uh, uh, one of the lawyers who, who was uh, the translator between us. So we could communicate this way. And then the next day we went to uh, ski and uh, he was singing opera all the way. We could not talk to each other. Mm. And uh, lo and behold, I was next time, uh, I came to America in a cruise in my, uh, Miami. And he stopped in Miami to meet me. And we fell in love. And that there. And he asked me to marry him. And the, I didn't speak English. And he didn't speak French. And there was no problem. We couldn't, you know, I mean, I mean just smile. <laughs> it was crazy. Totally crazy. Oh, and you got, and you got married. We got married. <laughs> we, uh, uh, the whole, he was, uh, uh, Later, he became president of McDonnell Douglas, but he was just a lawyer for McDonnell Douglas. So um, uh, the owner of the McDonnell Douglas was our best friend. We we went on a on a uh, airplane uh, full of uh, full of McDonnell Douglas people, <laughs> and we got married in Las Vegas. Wow, <laughs> where the stars are married. So. Uh, you know, when your wife doesn't speak a word English, when you come home with a, a lipstick on your on your uh, ne neck, nobody, you know, nobody's asking you, where were you? So our, our marriage was fantastic. I just smiled and that's it. But he didn't come home with lipstick on him, did he? I'm, I'm just joking. <laughs> so when did you learn English? Later, as you went? Well, I went to UCLA and um, I, I took uh, the classes and uh, yeah. psychology and songwriting, actually. Uh, wow. and, yeah. So That's a great story. I, so how many years have you been married now? Uh, we got married in 71. So... 81, 91, 2000. Uh, <laughs> 53 years wow 53 yeah that's amazing well wow. ups and downs you know it's like in life no, nothing is easy nothing is given you have to fight we have yeah we have but we're still good friends <laughs> so when was that was that before you were poisoned or after uh it was after so after you were better, and I really wanted to stop this life and 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 have a family. Yeah, and there he was. That's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> that was the city where you were poisoned. That was in Munich, also. No, 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 no. That was in France. That was uh, oh. uh, with uh, the very fam world famous singer Tino Rossi. Tino Rossi was the star of the show, and okay. I was the. Um, the subret, which is like the the, the, the funny the, the funny uh, lady. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. And uh, it was in Provence, Salon de Provence, where I got sick. Wow. So then, how did you end up in Munich? Uh I was still uh, when I got back. I was still. This is this was my life. I I was still doing what I yeah. did. Before, but I, I longed. That was a moment when I yeah. decided that I want to get married. Wow! So, yeah, I had it in my mind. Amazing. And were your parents still <laughs> around? Get me unless. <laughs> yes, good. Well, he did. He got. He gave right. Yeah. <laughs> did you ever say what am I doing? I don't speak English, or no. Yeah, he said after he said to John McDonald, you know the uh, yeah. McDonald, I guess he says, "My God, I I I don't know what I'm doing." <laughs> and John said, "That's okay. <laughs> She's okay." Wow, but you did it. Wow, that's amazing. In Las Vegas, so were your parents still alive then? Uh, my you? parents were alive, yes, uh, but uh, they couldn't come for uh, personal reasons. Uh, my dad was not very well that time. Oh. 
So did they meet your husband? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Did you go see them after? Uh, yes, we, we went. Okay, good. Oh, did they stay in France? They loved George very much. What'd you say? They loved George. Like oh. yeah. And, and um, did they stay in France, your parents? Yes. They did, okay. My father became a professor at the Sorbonne at the, uh, at the, uh, he spoke, he spoke eight languages and he was a, uh, international lawyer. And, uh, so, uh, he was honored. And then also he opened his own, um, uh, law office later. Uh, but he never made much money. Uh, professors in France are not very well paid. <laughs> wow. So, so they were still poor at the end? Pardon? They were still poor at the end? They didn't, they never... They were okay, but not not rich, no. Yeah. no. Wow, okay. All right, so you got married, you went to California, you learned English, you had kids, and then what? And then when the kids... <laughs> <laughs> Wow, <laughs> I'm coming back. <laughs> and so don't ever give up your dreams because that's who I am. I am a songwriter. I am a musician. I am a, a poet and uh, I'm a writer. And all this came out afterwards. Uh, and uh, hard work. I am working like Probably 14 hours a day, around sometimes around the clock. And because I was uh, a, a television host in Hungary, and that was a night here for me, so I became a night owl. I go to bed uh, until 4, 5 o'clock, or 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, depending on, so I work all night. Night is very good to work because you, you're not distracted. You know, it's dark around you, except the light is on your work. And so I like to work at night. So were you a Hungarian show host from California? Yes. I I did my uh, show. Uh, I broadcasted from my house. It's a beautiful house right on the ocean. So uh, it was beautiful to to see it in different places actually you can see some of those on i have also a youtube hungarian youtube channel <laughs> but on my Amer uh, american youtube channel you can see that including a lot of uh, vlogs and uh, you know i am dedicating the rest of my life i don't know how much i still have but i'm dedicating it in helping people uh, I want to inspire people to reach their potential because by sharing all my hardship and in, in life, I want them to make it easier to get to their goals uh, this way by learning what I did wrong or how, how I, what, what I did right also. So I want to inspire people. Mm. Uh, and uh, one of the things is I have uh, vlogs on YouTube. And uh, if somebody is interested to, to know how, how come I have so much energy, because on stage I am still dancing and moving and, <laughs> and I work all night. I had my dancers here. We worked like for six or seven hours and they were young and they were all dead. And when they left, I had seven or eight more hours during the night to work. So much energy. So if you guys out there want to know, then go in my vlog on YouTube. Uh, the log number five is about happiness, which is very important because if you are happy, then you can do so much more and you can be happy no matter what life gives you to you. You can find your happiness. So go and see. Uh, I have like 15 or 17 important uh, points that you can. And what's what's the name of that YouTube channel where I, they can find you? Ildi Lee, my, my uh, YouTube channel. Okay, Ildi Lee. And then put California Vlogs. 
Okay, California. Yeah, California. Okay. And the number five is happiness. Okay. Then there is number six, I think, is longevity, which is also important. Mm -hmm. There is one about love. And the most important, probably, of all of them is uh, about optimism. Because believe it or not, I mean, okay, what do you think? What is the number one factor in longevity? Number one. You're not going to... Everybody thinks is lifestyle, right? I was going to say breathing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but besides that, the lifestyle, everybody thinks. And of course, lifestyle is very important. You not know, smoking, you know, doing the right things for your body. But there is one is, is scientifically proven now, is optimism. Mm. Optimism. Uh, so this video you going to is going to blow your mind because I have an example for up, the up, optimism. It's the, I am not even going to say it. It's go and see it. It's unbelievable. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. So we will put the notes in the you know the links in the show notes. So okay. I'll send we'll you. Yeah. All right. Awesome. All right. We're going to take our commercial break and then we're going to come right back. All okay. right. Okay. See you in a minute. <laughs> Has social emotional learning become just one more thing on your teacher's plates? Do teachers and students both find it boring and ineffective? Then bring Kikori to your school. Kikori transforms classrooms through experiential SEL activities that help students play, reflect, connect, and grow. Even better, students say it's more fun than recess. Schedule a no obligation conversation at kikoriapp.com slash bring Kikori. K-I-K-O-R-I. -K Do you ever feel like you can't say what you really want to say? Or that you're stuck or in a holding pattern in your relationships, career, personal life, or finances? Are there things you want in life that you've given up on? Are you resigned that this is as good as it's going to get? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then Hillary Burns, host of the Getting Real with Hillary show, has the solution you need. Hillary is a published author of three books and has a program called The Getting Real Process. This process frees you from what is holding you back, allowing you to create a life you love. Don't believe it? It is hard to believe that it could work, isn't it? The proof is that hundreds of Hillary's clients have used The Getting Real Process and are now free to create whatever they want in relationships, career, finances, enjoying life, or just loving themselves more. So go to realtalkwithhillary.com and order Hillary's book, Real Talk, and set up a conversation. Welcome back to the Getting Real with Hillary show and our special guest, Ildi Lee. But before we bring her back, I'm going to give a special thanks to our sponsor, KikoriApp.com. If you'd like to bring experiential social emotional learning to your schools so that your kids can have a chance to get back their emotional connections and social connections that they may have lost during COVID, go to KikoriApp.com and schedule a consultation. It will change your children's lives, probably give the teachers a better lives and make your school a better place for everyone. And as always, I would like to promote my books. Um, this one, you saw the commercial. If you're someone who just is afraid to speak up like I was, go to realtalkwithhillary.com and schedule a time to talk. It's not easy, but we can do it together and you will you will have a life you don't recognize, and it's really fun when you start speaking up. Um, 
This one is about, I always thought there was kind of two sides to life as Ildi was talking about optimism. Well, on the left side of life, I had none. It just looked bleak. And then I saw there was a fun side of life too. And so I developed techniques for spending less time on the left and more on the right. And I wrote them about this. It really helps me to even reread this and remind myself how to do that. And then this was my very first book, um, The Second Piece of French Toast. The, the subtitle is, If Marriage Was My Dream, Why Was I Numbing Myself? And this is my story from when I woke up one day and thought, what the heck happened to my life? And it's the process of how I went about getting my, my own self back and the self that I was afraid I had lost. So if you're someone like that, you can find all of them on Amazon. You can Google or search um, Hillary A. Burns, Hillary Arno Burns, or the second piece of French toast will bring them all up. It's great reading and you will be inspired like Ildi is also an inspiration. And now we're gonna bring her back to the studio. Hello. Hello, Hilary. Well, I didn't know this. What is wonderful? You are an author yourself. Oh, yes. and it looks like we are working toward the same goal to yes. make this place, this earth, a lot better place to live in <laughs> and yes. to love each other. Yeah, and, so and I was stuck. I was really stuck, and I thought, you know what? If I can pull myself out of it, then I I was willing to put, you know, some real stuff out on the page, which took some courage. But um, I thought, you know what, if I can inspire at least one person to find themselves, then I was willing to, you know, be vulnerable. So that's what I did with my first book. Yeah. Good so for you. Yeah. This is wonderful to hear. <laughs> so that's what we met. We met. There is a reason for, for, for people to meeting, you know, that, that's, that definitely, that is a pattern. There is a reason. So, yeah. And also because my grandmother was Hungarian. So I feel like we might have been. Oh, my God. Yeah. Amazing. That's amazing. And the fact that you are a, a, an author, uh, let me tell you, uh, uh, I am president of the America uh, of the um, um, Southwest Manuscriptors, uh, as I told you uh, earlier. Uh, <clears throat> Ray Bradbury was one of our uh, uh, member fifty for fifty years member, and uh, we were extremely successful and big. And then during the pandemic, uh, we, it, we we lost each other so i am um reconnecting right now as a president and i am uh, getting people together and we meet one time once in our library here locally and the second month we meet on zoom i want to make the zoom meeting uh, every month and uh, i am offering right now a free membership to all the authors because I want to get people back to to their organization, and it would be wonderful if you could be uh, uh, our member or uh, maybe even come and talk to us uh, about your books uh, sure. uh, in one of the uh, zooms. So this is wonderful. And what is the purpose of the organization? And it's so it's the Southwest. It's a purpose is to help each other, to encourage each other. Uh, in the first part, we or we share our uh, rejections or our uh, success, and uh, we have a three minute, three to five minutes uh, speech, so you can read your uh, your material, and we can give you feedback or. Um, just have some uh, outsider uh, f famous people who would talk to us uh, and camaraderie and, and family. And we have a lot of fun. I have a wonderful uh, video. I'm going to send you the link that tells us a little bit about. Uh, okay. About awesome. So that's so you do a lot of things, right? That's one of them. I know you had said. You also, you did something with the orphanage, right? You raised money for an oh, orphanage. 
Yes, uh, uh, my songs are always helping people. And uh, I wrote a, a song about a blind guitar player. Mm. Um, when I heard that the wife of the Americana Airlines at that time, uh, she uh, sponsored uh, children, orphan and blind children, but they ran out of money. And so she said, anybody please contribute with five dollars or whatever, everything can't. I said, well, I have the song. We can make a fundraiser. And we made a fundraiser with a song and uh, we raised uh, enough money to build that home for the blind children. So if I didn't do anything more in my life than just that one song, my life was already worth the while. Wow. So how did people contribute? Like, how did you do it? Well, we had a very big fundraiser uh, in Long Beach uh, at the Marriott Hotel. Uh, I was surprised because uh, the children uh, of the this or orphanage, they, they had uh, huge um, pictures. And when we arrived to the hotel, you could see all the huge pictures hanging. Uh, 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 it, uh, it was unbelievable. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> and uh, it was so big that the um, ambassador uh, uh, of Mexico was here, uh, all, all the airlines, Mexicana airlines. And and uh, so it was thousands and thousands of people and it was very expensive for for uh, for the dinner and uh, building a home there at that time was not that uh, big money involved so we covered it with one single night of fundraising and did you perform there of did course you... oh, okay. i sang the, the, the blind guitarist uh that's a beautiful song by the way you should listen to it yes i will so is that, where can we find that? On your YouTube? We can find that on uh, YouTube. And also, I uh, it's on one of my, uh, I just uh, uh, put up CD uh, out, uh, the okay. CDs. Uh, okay, cool. Wow. And where, and where can they find those? Amazon? Amazon. Uh, you can find it on um Oh, let me see. Amazon, Spotify, okay. uh, Apple Music. They're on 50, 150 different uh, sources. <laughs> All right, great. So if you want to hear the blind guitar player, you can find it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> All right, awesome. There are many, many other songs. Uh, yeah. I do a lot of humanitarian songs to help people. Uh, I wrote yeah. a song about the muscular dystrophy uh, a boy who was dying of muscular dystrophy oh. and he was listening to it till the day he died uh, oh. about his life so those are the thing when you do you touch people like that it's it's you feel uh, one of other songs uh, of my songs is helping the homeless and the title of the song the old man's legacy it's also on the on the cd so well, if you listen to these series, not only you're contributing to uh, my charities, but also uh, you will feel richer just mm -hmm. by listening to, uh, to the stories. They're all stories, except a few that is just for fun. <laughs> we need that too <laughs> sometimes. Yes, and if you've seen, well, you saw her on the, on the first video, but if, when you see her, Ildi's, energy you can't believe that she's 82 she's just dancing and singing like she's 20 years old right right actually now i have a question how do you record a hungarian tv show from california in the middle of the night do you have guests on how do you do that i have what do you have guests on or is it just your show like how do you uh, do no that? i i had um uh a weekly uh, show and I had like a, a segment on that. Uh, it's like um, America. Um, Good morning, America. Morning yeah. America, something okay. like that. So uh, I had a nice segment, a uh, like 20 minute segment. And uh, on my segment, it's it was 
direct from here through the internet. And uh, sometimes the connection was not very good, but most of the time it was okay. And uh, so um, I also prepared the whole week t- for that segment. Uh, like I went out and, and uh, took pictures of things that they were interested to see, like the lobster festival in uh, the, the, the surf festival and things like that. <laughs> okay. So, so you're, so you're not just sitting there talking, you're actually. Oh, no, 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 I'm like a reporter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. For Hungary. <laughs> yeah. Did you do it in Hungarian? Yes, in Hungarian. And there's some of them I want to, uh, right now, when I have a little time, I would like to translate it and, and put it on, uh, on the YouTube and English too. But uh, they are all on my Hungarian uh, web, uh, YouTube site. <laughs> that's amazing I mean I think you know a lot of people would love to do the things you've done but maybe they think oh I can't or you know how would I have a sh-? like how did you make all that happen you know what do you think your secret is uh, the first I want to say that I am not any more special than anybody out there you guys all have the same attributes that I have I just worked a little harder. Uh, and uh, for instance, I don't take vacations. I, probably in the last 20 years, I didn't go and take a vacation. I work and work. But I love to work. I, I love what I do. So you have to find something that you lo- love mm-hmm. to do. Because then the morning, there is something what, what you get up for. Uh, it's extremely important. So people have to understand that they all have the same abilities I have. They just have to, um, I don't have the vocabulary in English and it comes to me in Hungarian, <laughs> to um, like get it out of yourself, <laughs> to, mm. to uh, self-inspiration, inspire yourself. There's mm. a voice. We hear voices. We hear our parents say, "You can do that. You 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 don't don't do that. Don't no replace all the negative uh, things that are in your head and say, I can do it. Yes, I can. I can do it. Yes, you can." So you, I know you. Okay, we forgot to cover. You were on America's Got Talent. Right. And there was a million and a half people that you beat out to get right. on there. Now, do you think it was your attitude that I can do it that got you on there? Who else could do <laughs> if you hear that there are a million and a half people before you? <laughs> there's no way you're going to try. But I believe that you have to believe what you're doing. If you believe what you're doing is valid, it's going to be valid. Uh, I don't know who said that, that. If you think you can, or if you say you cannot, in both cases, you are right. Mm-hmm. So so what did you have to actually do to get on America's Got Talent? Did you have to audition or did you send in a recording? Like, I, how did you get I on the show? I sent in a recording and they loved it so much that I didn't have to uh, pre-audition like everybody. I had the red carpet. <laughs> I, my producers couldn't believe it. I had the red carpet. And right away, I got to the producers. And they said, OK, let's see. And, and we, we choose what, what we're going to do. Uh, I tell you how, and probably that helped because I am also an Elvis impersonator. I have an Elvis show that has a a, a one-hour show that is based on the beautiful love story between Elvis and Priscilla, based on Elvis's hit songs. So that's something that makes people laugh and bring them to tears. It's very emotional. And when I am on stage in the costume and with the Elvis voice, uh, (laughs) I'm I'm singing also with the Elvis voice, uh, people don't see a woman. Somebody told me, and that was a beautiful compliment. He said, I don't see a woman up there. I see a character. 
And so mm-hmm. I become Elvis. And so I sent an Elvis uh, a song like that and, and other things. And they said, oh, my God, <laughs> a woman? Elvis wow. is almost 80 years old. <laughs> we never saw anything like you. So was that what you did on America's Got Talent? Did you do Elvis? That is one thing. They didn't let me do the Elvis because Priscilla somehow blocked the, the TVs to, 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 to do Elvis. I don't know what was going on, but that's what I was explained. So we had to find something else. And with the crew that I had, we find something else, which I started with the country song where my own songs and people went crazy uh, in the audience and then I take it off and I am in mini with the red boots with the mini at 80 <laughs> and moving like a teenager <laughs> wow that and was so, that is that on your website can people find that on my website and, lo- and Simon oh. loved it and so oh. the, the, I titled this uh, segment uh uh Simon loved me but <laughs> <laughs> see the website then you see the butt. <laughs> so if they go to her website is hollywoodstarproductions.com right Correct. and they can find the Elvis show too where's the uh, Elvis show the Elvis show you know is going to, uh, why did I I didn't put it on <laughs> there it's on YouTube oh, okay uh, so okay YouTube, Il Delay YouTube Okay. And then go to uh, America's Got Talent. No, no, I think the title is probably Simon Loved Me, But. <laughs> okay. All right, Simon. Okay. So some of her stuff is on YouTube. I have 300 uh, songs in uh, up on, on YouTube, so I can't remember all of them. Right. No, no, no. That's okay. So, okay. So some is on YouTube, Ildi Lee, and the other is on hollywoodstarproductions.com yeah you can see the video that we saw today and you can see her as a french pop star <laughs> and just a whole life and and it's just unbelievable so anyway I'll also, uh, be I'll be my friend on uh on um, um <laughs> facebook <laughs> oh okay well how do they find you there ildi lee ildi lee yes just okay ildi, uh Probably official, illegally official. Okay. Or on my, my private uh, side also. Uh, okay. Uh, private okay. So you can friend Ildi Lee. Be my friend. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What else? Uh, we have a couple minutes left before we wrap up. Okay. So very fast, I wanted to say uh, that, that don't ever give up your dreams because it's uh, never too late. Look at me. <laughs> I want to be the inspiration for everybody out there. At age 76, I became a TV host with the Good Morning America show. At age uh, 80, a little bit before 80, I became uh, America, uh, an America's Got Talent. At 81, I released the CDs uh, and albums, and I was on the cover of a, a very important uh, magazine. And they give me three pages. And so <laughs> here I am as a songwriter. And uh, here is Elvis. Il- <laughs> as Elvis. So, and uh, at 83, I'm going to be 83 in a few months. I am, believe it or not, going to, I start, I'm starting my career as a Hollywood film star. <laughs> I, this is my um, uh, head, headshot for the film. And wow. this is my character, Belinda. And this is really funny. Uh, what's really interesting about it, that when I finish my, uh, my um, monologue, the, the crew uh, uploaded me. And uh, so this is also... Uh, wow. I don't know which way. <laughs> Well, that's good. That's good, right there. And uh, we did the movie at my house, and the producer is a wonderful young uh, Greek uh, producer, um, Andoni Zorbas. And do you going to hear about him a lot because he's extremely talented? So, what's the name of the show? Can we find out yet? The, the dream. The dream. The dream. Okay. Well, it'll be out then. 
in when will it be out in was it going to be in theaters oh i, I oh absolutely uh, not only okay. in theaters but it's going to be distributed uh mondially uh internationally distributed wow Cool. Okay. Well, look for Belinda in the dream. All right. Now, so we have a minute left. What would you like to, I know you've already said, don't ever give up. What else, what would you like to see for the world? Like what's your vision? And just My vision is believe in yourself. My vision is the most important thing in life is love. Love yourself and love others. Uh, I want people to unite instead of, you know, there is a big division out there right now unite because we are all brothers and sisters and we are all working for the same thing so let's be good let's be kind and let's be loving to each other this is the most important thing that and one of my blogs is about love look at that that's really interesting because you can learn to love you can learn so open your eyes and and i love you all of you guys you, Hilary, especially. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you. you. A piece of your life out there. I do, do too. And everybody should just yeah. be happy. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with us today. It was awesome. And we look for, forward to seeing your book and your films and your CDs and all the stuff that you do. So thank you okay. again. <laughs> all right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Love you. I love you guys. <laughs> Thank you for watching this episode. I started getting real with Hillary when I discovered that I was a people-pleasing, pleasant phony and wanted to be more of my real self. We can grow together. If you will like the show, subscribe to my channel, and share this episode with your friends and family so that we can have a world that's more real.